Hey, welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard, Give Back podcast. I'm your host, Mike Blitzner, and I'm super excited today to have a real estate icon, a, a legend in Farmingdale real estate, certainly. I got Larry Theodore here, 40 year veteran, or certainly damn near close to it, Larry, right? Yep. What makes Larry an icon is the legacy of success he brings to the real estate field. In an era where the average agent maybe does six or eight sides, Larry, what do you do, about 90 sides a year? In a, yes, in a good year, yep. And would you say it's safe to say that about 75% is a list side as opposed to sales side business? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah. The, the, the more skilled side of the business to handle, the transaction management. So, you know, million dollars plus production every year. So a lot of people look at Larry as a model of how to build and craft their, their business. So welcome to the show today, Thank Larry. You. Thank you for joining us. Thank I'm so you. excited to have you My there. Pleasure. So um, as we get into this uh, today, I want to make sure that everyone plans to stay around to the end. We have this great drop the mic question. So stay around to the end and we'll go from there. So let's start with the work hard part, Larry, which I know you have down, right? So okay, no one does the type of business you do without putting the time in. What does is, what is a normal day look like for you? Normal day? I wake up 5 a.m. I do, I get organized. I have to be very focused and organized and I plan my day. So when you say get organized, what does that really mean? Like what, what, what are you putting together? I'm putting together what I plan to do for that day. Well, first I go through all my emails and I see what kind of offers I have and if the plan and prepare for listing appointments I'm going on. And I finish that up around 7, 7.30 in the morning yeah. and I usually I go out for a four or five mile run, walk. And right. I get, right. I'm in the office by 8 30, 9 a.m. Yeah. And I continue through the day and I just focus on my day totally. I don't get sidetracked with anything but real estate. So, focus, obviously, focus, focus, yeah. focus. Yeah. So, you know, you when we were talking before, you were talking about both, you've had five listings in the last five days. Is that correct? Yes. And all of them already have offers up. Absolutely. So, how many offers are you seeing on each one of your listings on average you get at the ballpark? It depends on the home and the price range. Anywhere from five to 25 offers on each house. And that is something that in my 39 years in the business, the business has totally changed. I have never seen anything like this. The amount of management you have to do. Yeah. I'm not only a project manager, yeah. you know, when I list a home, but in keeping these offers, every detail of each offer, so I could bring as a fiduciary the seller, have the seller comfortable with the right buyer they're going to pick yeah. for their home. I don't think the average person realize how intricate, how much goes into the transaction management. Like from the day you take the listing to orchestrating the, the photo shoot, right? I know you used Howard, right? But yeah. as you'll confess, yeah, Tatar, he does a great job, by the way. Whether it's staging the house or the open houses or yeah. you know, the size going up, I mean, everything just happens. I, I do something a little bit unique. Good. When I get a call for a potential seller that's thinking of listing their home, yeah. I get information from them and I check on their permits and COs before I go to their house. Yeah. And I have, with their authorization, if they have a tax grievance filed, they get the tax grievance paperwork. I have a sheet with my photographer of what the do's and don'ts. I have everything laid out ahead of time. So when I go in there totally prepared, it separates me from the competition. Yeah. And they're so impressed with my preparation up at each and every detail. Yeah. Yeah. List. So you're not there just there to list the house. You're actually there to help guide the seller through the whole process. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of a lot of wisdom in what you just said there about everything from CEOs, but people yeah. fail to to consider sometimes uh, they dormered or extended a house or put decks up and they don't always either get parents or they don't always close them. Yeah. And these things pop up on title later on. So when when a person's hiring a a broker like like you, yeah. sometimes they they get very short sighted. It's like anyone can take a listing, but it takes a true pro to to really get the the real details and all taken care of. So it actually feels easy yeah. for the seller. When the seller initially calls me, yeah. and asks for me, and would like to make it a part for me to come over to their home, the first seventeen seconds you're on the phone with them is the most crucial. 
Yeah. All you want to do is get them to like and trust you initially and close for the appointment. And I basically, you know, I've taken all the courses when I started the business in the 80s. I went to Tom Hopkins boot camp. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Jim Droz in California, his boot camp, and I listened to tapes and I kind of just took took it on myself. It's not rehearsed. It's kind of flows in its own emotion. But I tell them, Mr. Mrs. Sella, are you available on Saturday at 12 o'clock or is three o'clock better? Yeah. And I close them for the appointment. I tell them when I come over, we're going to be together for almost two hours minimum in selling a home for a half a million, three quarters of a million, million dollars. You have to go with the realtor you feel most comfortable with. So you entrust one of the largest investments in your lifetime, your home, yeah. and you'll make the right decision. I first get there, I do a physical inspection of the home, I write down every detail of the home, I get the age of the boiler, the amperage electric to see if there's asbestos, how old the roof is, give them suggestions, recommendations, right. and I make them feel comfortable. So I, I, I'm going to assume that uh, a decent amount of your business at this stage is referral. Yes. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things I always like saying to, to newer agents, remember referrals happen by design and we're in a service business. So when agents really take the focus of servicing and helping people mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to selling them, the, the consumer responds so much better. They are just so much more appreciative. And that's where the opportunity I think for referrals are. Would you agree? Absolutely. I would say at this point in my career, 80 percent of my business comes from referrals. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But I know you're uh, a relentless and consistent prospect. That your kind of prospect of reaching is, is legendary. Yeah. So why don't we pivot a little bit? Can, can you share with the audience a little bit about what it looks like, you know, to, to prospect and find, you know, property owners who are or thinking about selling what we say now or in the near future, right? I learned in the business 39 years ago. Number one is name recognition. Yeah. In marketing myself, I mean, I have my site when I list a property. Right. A sign goes up, my name's on the sign, the minute it gets the contract, it says in contract or sold. And being that I do 75 to 80% of my business in Farmingdale, right. my signs are plastered is around town. And then I do a mailing to the town of a just sold postcard, not something that they have to open. They see me, it's my signature, me standing in front of a sold sign with my name. Yeah. Um, what's the average number of those that you send out for each uh, deal? Well, each month I send out, it's costly, but I send this around 9,000 homes in Farmingdale. Yeah. And I send a just sold postcard to the entire town. Wow. Yeah. Each and every homeowner gets one. It's not something they have to open up an envelope. It's plastered a big picture of me in front of a sold site. Yeah. Three recent houses I've sold in the last month saying sold in three days, sold in eight days and with a picture of the home, and they're pressed. And then I take off on that. You know, I go on the cover of the Newsday Hometown Shopper, go on the cover of other magazines. I still deliver door knockers to homes. In my, I have a farm area of 3,000 homes in Farmingdale. It's interesting with all the technology, and well, there we are, podcast, yeah, video, yeah. what have you, yet yeah. uh, door knocking yeah, is still- I still, When I started the business at 29 years old, 39 years ago, I picked the farm area in Farmingdale. I picked the least and most expensive homes in the town. And I'd go out every day and pound the pavement, 100, 200 homes a day and knock on doors. And at that point, I had nothing. I just started. I said, yeah. you know, I knock on the door. I say, I'm your local realtor, Larry Theodore. Can I help you with any real estate needs now or in the near future? Yeah. Give them my business card. And then if I had a conversation, I'd write a handwrite on a thank you, mail it to them. And I continue with that same 3,000 homes. So, so you do, so let me just interrupt you yeah. one second there. So when you're doing like door knockers, so it, it, it obviously you don't want to put something in the in the mailbox, no. putting something on, on the, the door. door. And so are you knocking on the door? No, I, there? the door knocker now, I used to knock on doors back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. But now I put a door knocker on their door. I have a few kids in the neighborhood that help do this. Right. It says, how much is your home worth in today's market? Yep. Hello, me. I leave them on the, in my farm area on each and every door, not in their mailbox. So organically, if you're out there doing it, there's, oh, there's only a matter of time before you run into people. And exactly. The people stop to know you by now. They, they know that, me on a first name basis. They do. They know yeah. me. They even know what kind of car I drive. That, that. A lot of these coming down. I mean, I used to have in the 80s, I had a 
gray Volvo in the early 90s. They're like, oh, Larry, we saw you in the gray Volvo. Yes. Now I have the black, you know, Jeep. But yeah. It's the Larry will be. That's yeah, it. They're on to you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Ah, that's interesting. Anyone who really knows you knows that you do a unique thing around the holiday season every year, which is something iconic, I think, because it's so different than what the average person does. You know what I'm talking about. Poinsettia plants. Yes. It's exciting, the poinsettias. The first year I was in the business, I ordered, say, 50 poinsettia plants. I'd go around with my wife, Patricia, and my son, one of my sons, and we'd deliver 50 poinsettias, and then we'd go to each home that I was trying to list that I gave an appraisal to, each home where I sold the house to the potential client. Well, fast forwarding now, I'm up to a few thousand poinsettias. That's one of the big disconnects they say in real estate is the agent who sells a house. Yeah. They, when they sell it, they disappear. They so, tell me this. They say, yeah. I mean, I have a house I listed and Joe Schmo sells it from XYZ. And then they'll get a poinsettia from me every year. They get a Christmas card, a magnet. They'll say 10 years later, they call me for an appraisal. They want to move yeah. anything. And they'll say, I never heard from my agent. I have a database of three, 4,000 homeowners yeah. that have sold, selling, currently passed. And they get a Christmas card in the mail, yeah. handwritten by my assistants. And they, in January, we send out a magnet calendar. Yeah. I get people calling me, mailing, emailing. I, I make sure you don't forget my magnet calendar in this year with a little recipe on it. <laughs> it's all just stay in front of them. Yeah. You know, so one thing that I find is interesting is there's been a huge trend in our business, by the way, for, for producers like yourself to build a team. And yet, as an icon, it's Larry Theodore. And so, again, you're the top individual producing agent in the, in the entire Cobalt Bank or American Homes company. So you've decided to stay in that lane. Was there a time you considered, you know, becoming a team? Not really. I like to be in control. Everybody probably knows that. Um, but I find if I handle it, it gets done correctly. Yeah. You know, I had a prior business in my teens and early 20s. I had a landscape construction price, maintenance business. As everybody probably knows, I had that business. was very successful. Started at 13 years old through my into my late 20s. Yeah. And I built it up to having uh, quite a few trucks, over 30, 40 employees, a bookkeeper. I mean, and it got away from me with too many people not doing the right job. I kind of like to handle everything. Again, I miss something really when I go on a listing appointment. I mean, I even point out to the homeowners that I have, and I've done this, I do this my whole career. I have a handyman, I have a contractor. Before they put the house up, I have somebody that could fix a window, fix a door. I put them in touch. I have cleaning services. I do it all, and then some, for each and every homeowner. And to depend on other people to focus on this, doesn't get done properly and I, it comes back to me um you know ninefold yeah i bet you even though you're in the individual producer lane right you still have a, a pseudo team because like you have your photographer howard fritz right right you know listen, you have somebody who helps you like if you need repair work on the house that you recommend or whatever yeah tom from blue water construction yeah he does a lot of the repair work um yeah howard's the photographer i have uh Jimmy from Map trying to asbestos. I have, um, you know, Brandon from the cleaning service. Right, right. And I have a whole list of people. I mean, I, which I, yeah. again, I tell the people, when I list your home, as Debbie Escher told me years and years yeah. ago, you become a project manager. Yeah. And I am a project manager and then some. I mean, I tell them when I go to their house, I'll be the go-to for everything. I will list your home for sale. I will do the marketing and advertising. Yeah. I will be there for all the negotiations and I will make sure I vet the banker, the loan officer. I'm there for the engineer, the bank appraisal, the termite, yeah. the inspections, the utilities, and then some. Yeah. And even after the closing, I still stay on top of things. Yeah, yeah. If they hold escrow, what happens to do with COs and what? Sure, sure. You have a couple of go-to attorneys you work with? I work with a couple of attorneys. And that I will, yeah. Yeah. What do you recommend? I recommend um, local real estate attorneys. Um, I use Ed Malloy, uh, Jim Kokoris. I recommend the client to them. The client calls and they speak to them on the phone because yeah. they know some attorneys, 
you know, you don't speak to them until you go to the closing table. Right. They're, and they're hands-on. I make sure they get back to them right away and yeah. they're on top of their game. Yeah. And I have, and lenders too. Yeah, I should, we should go to lender. I have um, Vinny from Guaranteed Rate, who I've known for over 30 yeah. years, and I trust him. He take He's very service-oriented. Yeah. Um, Bruce is very good. I use Bruce also. Bruce, Bruce, a lot of Bruce's. Which Bruce are you talking Bruce about? Bruce Berizak. Yeah. I think Bruce, you're Zach. Bruce Zach. Okay. Yes. Contour Morgan? Contour Morgan. All right. That's a good guy. He's very good. He's guy. He's very, I admire him. He's yeah. young and he just stays on top of his business. Yeah. And um, when I first started out, I would take out every buyer and myself and I would work buyers. I'd sell a lot of, one third of the listings I had, I sold myself. That was back in the 80s and 90s, yeah. you know, double-sided transaction. As my business grew, and I spend more time with listings. I do have a buyer associate, Lori Murphy, that I work with, and we work a good amount of buyers together where I get the people that call me on the buyer lead, whether it's a sign call, an internet call, or what. I talk to the buyer initially, yeah, and I you know, fill them out, and then I put them in touch with Lori, and Lori will take them out, a lot of times show them the home, and I'm involved, though. I'm on top of everything right. you know, with her, and we work the buyer as partners. Right. You know, the buyer. All right. So at around about what you put at it. I have the yeah, yeah, yeah. internal team. Internal team. And then I have Jim Mevelman, yeah. who's been in the office yeah. for 35 cool. years. Yeah. Jim is really my right hand. When I get a listing, he makes keys, puts lock boxes, hangs signs for me, writers, sold yeah. signs. Other times I'm tied up, we'll meet a termite company or an engineer. Right. I, I'm... To have two things at the same time, and he's gone to some closings for me, pick up checks, and yeah. a million things. I can go on and on. You know what this really does speak to, and it comes back to what we were talking about before remember, referrals. It's a high level of service and professionalism. You know, when someone hires Larry Theodore, yeah. they got a whole team. They, they don't get your know, forty years worth of wisdom mm-hmm. uh, and experience, yeah. but. You get to orchestrate a whole team depending on what the issues are. Obviously, not every transaction is the same, right? right? So you, you have to be able to pivot on the fly. Yep. So it's no surprise to me that you get so many referrals because of the level of service you bring. Yep. So. I mean, it comes back because after the closing, they get a quality service survey right. emailed to them from Real Satisfied. And I mean, they just write a testimonial yeah. that just says it all. It's, yeah. it's a, it's, and I, Post those testimonials. Yeah, I've seen them. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Now, I remember we had this uh, conversation a while back. We were talking about how you met your wife. Now, your wife, Pat, has a real estate license. Yes. Yeah, all right. So, you know, I had a landscaping business. Right. It was very successful. Then the landscaping business failed. And I was looking for something else. My bookkeeper, landscaping, said, Larry, you're a great salesperson. I like houses. So I went to a career in real estate. Right. They had a thing in the paper, Century 21 Career Real Estate. You're in thirty to $100,000 a year. I went to the seminar in Hot Park, put my name down uh, to hopefully get hired. I never got a phone call. Nobody called me. <laughs> Almost a month went by. Finally, I got a call from Phyllis and Ted Dallow, and they had me come in for an interview in Farmingdale. They hired me, and um, I started as a salesman there in January 86. I was about a few weeks into the business. I really wanted to get my first listing. I was called to sell by owners and expired. I called this woman. She had a house in Lindenhurst, but she lived in Brooklyn, yeah. and the house was locked up, and she couldn't get out here. She was ugly. I went to the house with a ladder. She gave me permission. I climbed in the window, unlocked the house, basically drove to Brooklyn, listed the house. So then I got a couple of more listings. I'm into the business a couple of months. And I have a listing in Farmingdale on Park Circle. And don't forget this woman, Patricia. Uh, she was an agent at a local real estate in town. At that time, she was working at Hard Scrabble Realty. Pat came in the office to pick up a key to show the listing on Park Circle. I walked out with enthusiasm, telling her all about the listing, but more enthusiasm. I mean, this is the 80s. She's in a fur coat and uh, boots and, um, and <laughs> looking gorgeous. And I'm... Um, you know, basically head over heels. And uh, yeah, Pat and I became uh, friends, yeah. you know, and we started talking on the phone and we'd have meet for coffee on Main Street in Farmingdale and sometimes have lunch together. 
And uh, we were friends for about a year and a half. In fact, I remember liking her so much that she had a listing that was expiring of her own. And I called her up on a Sunday and I said, Pat, your listing is going to expire tonight at midnight. Yeah. And I really, I think you should go extend it, the listing, or I'm going to go get it. She goes, I can't. I'm afraid. I don't even drive down the block. I, I avoid the house, the whole area, because I'm afraid. Well, lo and behold, she listened. She went. She went to see them, and she extended the listing, and she sold the listing herself. I mean, I gave up the listing, but, you know, I liked her too much. We fell in love, and about a year or two later, we got married, and it's 35 years later, and she's my soulmate, and yeah. she worked with me in real estate in and out over the years, quite good at what she does, has a knack for real estate and people, and yeah. Great person. So, what I'm, role does she play at this stage in your your career? So, I know you're more on the front lines and stuff. Yeah. Is it just trying to keep Larry focused? Husbands and wives working together has its ups and downs. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm more or less, you know, dot every I, cross every T with the notes, and the driver crazy with the notes because she does everything more, you know, but in her own way, in a good way. Yeah. We just bought a legal to family recently. Yeah. Yeah. And within, within the last year, and she was the GC. She handled the whole thing. I said, don't call me during the day. I got too much. You can handle that. Working. She's working. Sighing and I have contractors, electricians, plumbers, kitchens, baths, does the whole thing. And um, yeah, that's kind of what she likes right now. And she's got a knack to um, renovating and decorating and yeah. loves it, loves it. So I started the business when I was 29. And I wanted to build the career, and I married Patricia. And when I married her, uh, she was divorced. And when I met her, I was engaged. I obviously fell in love with her. I broke the engagement. She finalized the divorce. And she said, I have three boys. They're 13, 11, and 6. Are you going to get a package? I said, no problem. I'll give you a 10. So I married Pat with three boys. And she did most of the raising of the children. And I was building my career in real estate. So I worked seven days a week. And then after 10 years or so, a best friend of mine, we went to dinner, a few couples, and he said, you got to take a day off. So I started taking a day off, and then I work six days a week, except in July and August, I do enjoy the summers here on Long Island, and I try to take right. um, week two days a week, and I try to do sometimes weekends off in the summer. You struggle with that. I struggle with that also with... All you know, because I'm hands on with my clients. Yeah, inside. Yeah, you got that engine, so to speak, or that energy that just keeps you know exactly. taking. So it's hard to have the up. I I respect that. We have to work hard, but this play hard. So you know, so 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 what does you know Larry Theodore do for a hobby or entertainment? Well, the biggest thing I like is going out every morning and doing that one hour walk or run four or five miles. It just de-stresses me. I feel healthy doing it. And it's really enjoyable. Um, my wife, Patricia, and I love the beach. Yeah. We have a beautiful home with a beautiful in-ground pool and a banner, and we like our pool. And, of course, being in landscaping, my big hobby now is gardening. Yeah. Every year around May, I start, and I have my perennials and annuals, and I do plant things and weeding, and I like working in the garden. It's, it's, uh, it's therapeutic. Yeah, it gives you a balance. Of, exactly. Yeah, that. because, you know, if you just keep going, step out of the gas, you know, you're going to run out of gas. Think exactly. You've got to recharge those yeah. batteries. Yeah. You know, we have seven grandchildren. Okay. We try to spend some time. We enjoy the time. I mean, we're hands-on grandparents. We're younger grandparents. We're very active. Yeah. Good, good. It's quality time. Quality time, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, I know we, we talked a little bit about, um, like, get a little more personal so people get to know Larry and... You share with me the, 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 you know, the story from when you, your childhood. Yeah. You feel comfortable sharing that today? I have no problem sharing sure. right. it. Okay. So when I was three years old, yeah. you know, everybody thinks I shaved my head, but when I was three years old, I lost my hair and I alopecia. And my parents took me to, you know, different specialists and tried everything. And there was no cure for this. Growing up, uh, my grandfather was Italian off the boat from Italy and I used to follow him around. He taught me a lot of work out to, he'd be out in San Remo, Kings Park, and he had a home out there on the Nisikar River. And we'd go out there and spend the summer, and he was teaching me how to chop wood and work in his garden. And I'd follow him around all day. Yeah. And he told me over the years, 
you know, I'm in a kindergarten. I beat three kids up at the bus stop. They lay in front of me, but no hair. And he'd say, Larry, you don't have a handicap. You have your eyes, you have your hands, you have your legs. Yeah. This is not a handicap. This is going to make you more successful in life. And going forward, I mean, going into high school, seventh grade in Leviton, I wore a baseball cap the whole year. But then after that, I came into my own. And in sales, you know what? It's a positive. It, they say it takes four to five times to remember somebody. Yeah. It only takes one or two times to remember me, you know. You're, you're following your luck. Yeah. I like how, like, with everybody, you know, uh, you people sometimes on the outside think they, they see the good in it. Yeah. And they don't realize we all have challenge. Yes. Right? The life's not always easy, you know. No. So one of the things I like to say is, like, man plans and God laughs. Right? And, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, but it's not that we have a challenge. It's the that the problem is, is how do we rise to meet the challenge? Exactly. So I kind of love that story about, and, and having a mentor like your, your grandpa. And it's awesome. It's interesting to get more personal with my landscaping business that I built up. I mean, I knew how to work hard and I had, at my peak of my career in landscape, I had three hundred lawn accounts a week. I knew how to work hard and I knew how to do it all there, but I didn't know how to, I wasn't a businessman, I didn't know how to manage money and manage it. And I took on some partners and I lost the business. Yeah. And what I'm leading up to is I failed. And out of that failure, yeah. I got into real estate success. And the biggest driving motive yeah. for anybody, and that's for, I'm talking for me, yeah. but yeah. me, I should really not say for anybody, but for me is fear of failure drives me. Yeah. Driving, and I think it's something that drives a lot of people. Well, you take the negative and you channel it right in a positive yeah. way. I know it's hard to get to the top or to succeed in yeah. a career or in real estate, but it's also just as hard if I uh, want to stay on top. Yeah. And to maintain that stamina and stability. Yeah. Well, I, th I think that's one of the things that make you an icon in the business is that you've been on top. You know, you, you came in and you clawed your way to the top. Yeah. Obviously, you worked hard to earn it. But you've stayed at the top. You know, the, the mark of a champion is the consistency of your production, you know, which is just remarkable. I've seen every marking possible. Yeah. I mean, I started in 86 when houses were $150,000. Yeah. Um, the market peaked in, eight, you know, in 88, and then it came down. Yeah. I'll never forget 1992. In August of 92, I had 70 listings. Wow. Nothing was selling. Yeah. Nothing. I was going here. All I was doing was getting price reductions. It just, and then what do you, yes, the I asked. What do you think the average uh, asking price was at that time with that nothing was selling at? Oh, less than 200000 I know, mate. We, we should have bought every one of those. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. And then you go through the years and you see the market. And obviously, like everybody, you know, the pandemic hit yeah. in 2020 in March. And from when we reopened or continued in July of 2020, it was my best year was 2021 in the business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody did good then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't know that many individual agents did almost a million and a half in, in commission. So that's yeah, a hell of a year. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you. That's good. All right. So not real estate. Yeah. But, you know, we all have another side of stuff. Um, I know it's a little left field. What's the most adventurous thing you have ever done? Oh my God, what comes to my mind immediately is, I'll never forget this, back in the 90s, my wife Patricia and I bought a ski house in Vermont. Okay. Our three boys loved to ski and snowboard. Okay. So we bought, it was exciting, we bought this, we went up to Stratton, Yeah. we looked around, we found a, um, a condo on the mountain, and we looked at a few, and my wife Patricia and loving real estate, come on Larry, come on, we gotta buy this, and you know, I have a thing with, I get really nervous buying something, but then once I buy it, I can't sell because I hate change. And past the opposite, she can buy, she could sell, she goes more with the flunk. She goes with change, but she decided to keep you. Right. But, 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 yeah. So, but leading up to this, so we had this place in Stratton, and then her sister bought a place and her husband and our niece and nephews came up. Now, we would go skiing. We were never great skiers, me and Patricia. The kids were great. They would do the black diamonds. We would stay on the green. I got to the point where I didn't, me and Howard down the, me and Patricia went down the hill. We didn't yeah. fall, took a lesson or two. I just remember this vividly that 
I was afraid of heights. So to get me on a chairlift or a gondola to the top of the mountain was difficult, but I went along and did my best, bit my top. So when you went to, we went up there during Christmas to New Year's. Yeah. And we took the gondola to the top of the mountain. And it was 30 below. The winds were gusting at 50, 60 miles an hour. We had the snow goggles on, the face masks. And we get off, and I couldn't even see Pat. I couldn't see my rest of them. You know, my kids were up there with us. They took the lift up. And I got so scared. I mean, it was an adventure. I just yeah. looked straight ahead, and I said, all I got to think about is I got to get down this mountain alive. And I just skied straight down to the bottom, and I came down, and then they said to me, Larry, we lost you. I said, I know. I just had to get down the mountain. I was like, so petrified, yeah. you know, of that. That was the that was one of the biggest adventures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. And the other one quickly was me and Patricia went to Mexico one year. Um we had just been married a short time. And again, I'm afraid of heights. Okay. And she talked me into parasailing. Okay. Was tequila about a little, a little <laughs> I, 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 and <laughs> so she went first. And she fell. Well, when the when the parasol landed, she landed in the water, and they quickly had to get it because they said there's sharks. So I took the parasol next, petrified, like I don't know, but I ended up getting through it. Yeah. And just to finish, it was a phenomenon. I never did it again. Do you have a bucket list? Uh, things like that. You have a bucket list of things you want to do in your life, you know? Uh, really, I just I don't. I don't have that bucket list that I have to go to this country or that country. Yeah. My bucket list is to stay healthy. Yeah. All right. To stay happily married to my wonderful <laughs> wife, Patricia. It's a good goal. And we have three wonderful boys and seven grandchildren and a wonderful family. Yeah. And um, basically, yeah, we. I don't need the bigger things in life. You don't need the bungee job. You don't need to... Uh, no. To, I mean, things off your list. No, we have a we have our own we have our own little bucket list. If you want to have a good chuckle here, I mean, we have a two hundred fifty year old farmhouse, yeah, and we've really nurtured this home and fixed it up. And you know, about five years ago, we always wanted central air. Right. Never thought you could put central air in an old home. So Pat says that's part of my bucket list. I want central air conditioning, uh, and you know, we wanted a pool, and we got a pool. We wanted, yeah. um a cottage on our property. We did got that. So don't have any luxurious bucket list just to, you know, stay happy. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> the number one thing in yeah. the bucket list is always be stay happy. Yeah. You know? So always we say work hard, play hard. Yeah. It's fun. You know, exactly. But, but I think when things are good, that's an issue to we'll get that hat, that core happiness yeah. makes everything else easier and stuff. Quite frankly, I'm 68. I love what I do. It's a passion, and I want to continue working. And uh, yeah. I you know my father and father were retired in the early mid '60s. I saw them sit around. And I like to be in the game, and yeah, now I want to continue. So, so what advice would you give to a new agent starting out in, in the business today? My biggest advice is to do this full time. Okay. Yeah, full time. This is not a part time job. I know it's difficult financially, some or most, but if there's any way uh, if they can nurture where they could do it full time and they work hard and be able to deal with rejection and failure. That takes a little time to get you to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is false expectation with many new people that come in that, um, you know, you got to go to a 77 and or 77 and a half hour training class now to just get your license. And you see some of them come in and like, all right, well, you know, what are the training? And and of course, we always introduce them to the Academy at American Homes. So, you know, you mentioned that, Ash, you know, does, you know, I've met this job, you know, being, uh, handling absolutely the training. But there's this, this segment sometimes of agents that come in and it's like, oh, I've done my 77 and a half hours. I'm already trained. And it's like, um, right. no, you're not. <laughs> there's way more depth to our business that people realize. You never stop learning. You yeah. got to keep going to courses and classes and seminars. And I did it all through my career. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I went to the um, 
just last year, I went to the Long Island Board of Realtors uh, annual conference at Crest Hollow. At Petra, at Crest Hollow, and I really enjoyed the classes. Yeah, they were wonderful. I, I learned things. I picked up things. Yeah, I uh, probably, probably could have taught some of the cat place. And yeah. where they're still listening. And uh, so I still, show. I'm still learning. You never stop learning. Yeah, you know, yeah. never stop well, learning. I think you got a interesting perspective. Haven't done it, you know. 40 years, we have seen so much change. Right. So one of the constants in, in, in life, it seems, but, you know, it is change. Yeah. So uh, I, I remember I was having this conversation a while back about like technology. Yes. Like, well, I'm really not that good at technology. And um, David, our senior vice president, was recanting this story. He said, I'm sitting there the first time he met you at your desk. Yeah. And you said, I don't have a CRM. And, and David said, he looked around and he saw stacks of these little folders. Yeah. Or deal files, yeah. and he goes. Well, from what I can see, Larry is you have a CRM, but yours is just very flammable. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so you know, which is interesting. So we all have a system. It's just a technology should be replace some of the fundamentals. I love before you were talking about you know still knock on doors. And, oh yeah, you know, to people business. I have my old fashioned system with some technology yeah. that's kept me in my comfort level or my comfort zone. Right. And I don't want to pull myself out of that comfort zone too quickly. No, I get that. I get that. And uh, as we've worked together for many yeah. uh, years now, yeah. one, of the, one of my sayings I, I love is it's leave, follow, or get the hell out of the way. Right. And, exactly. You know, so as it pertains to someone like you from my faith, it's right. It was like, all right, we're here for you. We'll leave. We'll let you yeah. some, of this, uh, some tools to you. Yep. But you know what? If it's working and you're good, we're going to get out of your way and let you do what you do best. Because- exactly. All right, so Larry, the part of the podcast being work hard at play hard, we've touched on a lot, but we haven't touched on giving back. And our company um, started a charitable foundation two years ago, Heart of American Homes Foundation. And I know you are, have been a key contributor since day one. Yeah. Um, which I mean, just shows you the character. What part of giving back and charity you want to you want to talk about your mindset and what you've seen with whether the foundation? I think knows. I think Heart of American Homes is a wonderful foundation to help people in need. Yeah. Uh, you know, families. I mean, I know you've helped. Um, there was a fire in a house and you've helped yeah. family or yeah. uh, health. I said, we helped. We helped. It's, we, a, it's a collective. We right? helped. It's a- and then, so I decided when they started the foundation. Yeah. And Tom and Mike approached with the foundation. I just elected to every commission check that I received, um, I have them take out of that commission check. Fifty dollars yeah. for each and every commission for Heart of American Homes yeah. to help the foundation and help the families and people in need. Yeah, and uh, that's what I do. Yeah, and, and it's so important because that, with that foundation, by the way, we've been averaging raising from a thousand a year right. on average, right. and um, that's a foundation that's a hundred percent run out of the American Homes office. So there's no overhead. There's no employees. It's all volunteer. Each office uh, elects a, a member to the board of directors. So uh, the only overhead is if we do fundraisers, which we do several a year, the cost of the fundraiser, but that 100% of the net money right. is used to go back and help people in our community. So, and, you know what, it's, 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 it's great that, you know, I know you from day one have uh, committed to uh, Absolutely. awarding that, and that's awesome. So we have the drop the mic question, and the drop the mic question today is this, is, all right, no BS. Celebrity crush, who is it? Oh, by the way, Pat's going to hear this, I'm sure. Um, she plays Beth on Yellowstone, the series. Kelly Riley. Kelly Riley. Yeah, yeah. she's bad. She's bad woman. <laughs> Which so is great. Bad better? She's bad is better. <laughs> so, um, all right, well, this is our episode of Work Hard, Play Hard, and Give Back, a real estate podcast. I want to thank Larry Theodore uh, for, you know, not only uh, being here today itself, but being a great guy, you epitomize, you know, what's right about real estate, hard work, you know, and uh, and you have fun, do it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, you know, we'll get charitable, all the positive things that you want to see. And, um, but so glad you could join us. Thanks, man. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, buddy. A pleasure. If I could help anyone with any real estate needs now or in the near or distant future, please feel free to contact me. I specialize with sellers and buyers and residential real estate. With my 39 years experience in the business, I will service you to the utmost. 
You could be reached at 516-859-8738. Thank you.